watching the station covering all of the DMV. This is DC News Now. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us for DC News Now. I'm Susan Tran. Chris Flanagan has a night off. DC News Now is your local election headquarters. And the first day of early voting in DC just wrapped up. Voters are looking at several key races as well as an initiative that could change the way we vote. DC News Now's Daniel Hamburg live for us at the Georgetown Neighborhood Library. And Daniel, break down how voters are feeling about this election. Susan, people are excited to get out and vote, do their civic duty at one of 25 locations like here at the Georgetown Neighborhood Library that are open through Sunday all day uh, so people can cast those early votes. And in the drop boxes alone, there have been nearly 36,000 ballots cast. On the first day of early voting in D.C., voters are showing up. It's a beautiful day to vote. The lines are very short and it was a quick, easy process and you can vote in any jurisdiction. Uh, in DC. Most candidates who won the primary are expected to win the general. Still, people will be watching the Ward 8 seat where Councilmember Trayon White is running despite being indicted on federal bribery charges. He has pleaded not guilty. But probably the most talked about item on the back of the ballot is Initiative 83, which would create a ranked choice voting system. That means you would rank up to five candidates in order of preference, and a candidate would need 50% of the vote to win. I voted for it. I think it's an important opportunity to expand uh, the voice for the people in the, in the city and so that uh, our elections aren't necessarily settled at the primary. If no one hits that threshold, the candidate with the fewest votes is removed. Those who chose the losing candidate have their second choice recorded, and the process continues until someone gets 50%. Mayor Muriel Bowser is among the top politicians against it. I am totally against ranked choice voting. I'm okay with the majority ruling as the majority has ruled in all of our elections. The second part of I-83 would also allow independents to vote in primary elections. Some worrying they could meddle in the two-party system. They are no. citizens, <laughs> and the They're system all... allows them to be, so why would we deny them the vote? Now, there is ranked choice voting already in place in Arlington, Virginia, and Tacoma Park, Maryland. So this is a big issue for voters uh, that would have to be also approved by council uh, once this goes through, if it goes through. Through. Now, these early voting centers are open through this Sunday from 8.30 in the morning until 7 p.m. You can find a list on our website, dcnewsnow.com. We're live in Northwest. Daniel Hamburg, DC News Now. All right, Daniel, thank you so much for breaking that down for us. Virginia is asking the Supreme Court to intervene in a legal battle over the controversy on its voter rolls. The Federal Appeals Court upheld a previous ruling requiring the registrations for 1,600 voters to be restored. Now, this all started when Governor Glenn Youngkin, through an executive order, started purging voters earlier this month. But a district judge ruled it was illegal to do so during a 90-day quiet period. The appeals court saying that Virginia's process gave no proof the purge names were actually non-citizens. Happening tomorrow, strap on those stilettos. The 17th Street High Heel Race is happening tomorrow night. The event supports the local LGBTQ community and businesses. And our very own morning anchor, Corey James, is getting his heels ready for the race. Just take a look at his flair. Here we go. Here's the big reveal. Oh my God, these, these are nice. Oh. <laughs> I love it. Such a genuine oh reaction because they are nice and amazing. Drag queen Regina Josette Adams nice. bedazzled Corey's heels and says that she spent more than 30 hours transforming them. The high heel race starts at 9 tomorrow night in DuPont, but festivities get started at 6. We will have live team coverage. I will be at the finish line to bring you all of the excitement, and I'm most excited beyond those fabulous shoes. <laughs> the weather looks like it's it's gonna hold up. Yeah, do you think uh, Corey legitimately wears those uh, running? No. I understand that he might bring backups to run it. Yeah, those are so nice. They're they too look, fancy, right? They look so good. I would be a little bit scared, but I'm, I have an expectation you're gonna win it all. I'm bring not running. The goal. I don't bring wanna break my goal. ankle. <laughs> <laughs> hey, great weather for yes. the event for tomorrow and just great weather in general that we're gonna continue to have across the DMV. I don't see any big changes that are on the bad end. 
end. On the good end, if you're looking for some more warmth, I have the 80s back into the forecast. And so we have a warming trend uh, that is going to continue to make its way across the DMV. Upper 40s right now from Luray to Woodstock, 57 for DC and Arundel County, uh, downtown region out that way. The Bay Breeze is picking up for Baltimore into the upper 40s, uh, but still a ton of clearing. The high pressure is under control and our next big storm system, folks, that is a difference uh, this week is not until Friday. It is a cold front and that will be our next big shot of some rain. So really tomorrow morning, it is a chilly start, but no frost or freeze warnings in place for tonight. And that's a big difference from 24 hours ago. Uh, we're headed for the 70s tomorrow. I have more on that forecast coming up. All right, Janessa, developing tonight in the district, a three month old puppy is stolen right from a car in Northeast. This all happened around 1 30 on Saturday, Sunday afternoon in Harwood Road. This is right next to the Basilica at Catholic University. Take a look at the puppy. Police say that someone broke the window of this car and stole this three month old poodle named Oslo. If you have any information, if you recognize the puppy or someone is selling a puppy that looks like this, you're urged to call police. Developing now in Virginia, a Loudoun County deputy has been arrested. Mason Zimmerman is accused of having a sexual relation with a woman inmate. The sheriff says that Zimmerman was arraigned today, fired immediately. He will have a bond hearing tomorrow. Zimmerman was has been a correctional deputy since 2016. Over in Maryland, three teens arrested for a robbery in Bethesda. Police say they're 14, 15 and 16 years old. Investigators say that they went to the tobacco and more Mart, tried to leave with some items, and that's when an employee went to stop them. And officials say the 16 year old hit that worker in the head. The teens then ran off with those stolen items. Also in Maryland, the efforts to put phones on silent in schools. The Prince George's County Council is looking to ban cell phones in classrooms and update this policy that has not been changed since the 90s. DC News Now's Tim Reed has reaction from families tonight. Council members say they are off to a good start. The proposed legislation passed in committee, but this is just the first phase. The council says this is long overdue. I also got some reaction from parents who shared their opinions on this matter. The Thomas family was letting off a little steam Monday afternoon, playing some football in the backyard at their home in Bowie. They support the proposed legislation to prohibit students from using cell phones in school. For a long time, they've never allowed their two 12-year-olds to take a cell phone to the classroom. I agree with it. Um, we've decided to not allow our youngest, the 12 year olds, to have cell phones just as a way to kind of preempt this since there are so many kids that use cell phones at school. Uh, generally, I'm in support of it. I think uh, cell phones are too much of a distraction and uh, the kids don't need them at this age. And I think we've seen a lot of reporting about uh, the deleterious effects of cell phones and social media on kids mental health. The county council passed the resolution in committee. Juanika Fisher tells us cell phones do not belong in the classroom. She says because of bullying and other negative ways students use the phones, the Prince George's County Councilwoman says it's time to prohibit phones in schools. I'm hoping that the bill will pass at full council and I'm really hoping that our our county school board and our superintendent uh, Mr. House will look at this seriously and start implementing plans um, to update our cell phone policy that hasn't been updated since the 90s. Yeah, I think they're a huge distraction. In a few weeks, the proposed bill will head to the full council for a final vote. Atlanta, Maryland, Tim Reed, DC News Now. Let's talk commanders. It was a hail of Mary that sent commander fans erupting in cheers and had all of us really asking, did you see the end of that game? Take a look at video from the stands capturing an incredible moment here as players and fans celebrated. In the most amazing final play here, Jaden Daniels making a 52 yard pass to Noah Brown in the end zone for that final touchdown. The team is now six and two on the season for the first time since 2008. DC News Now's Randy Bass has fan reaction from Northwest Stadium. 
Hey, I think I can still hear fans cheering here in Landover a day later, but I'll tell you what, I saw plenty of people wearing burgundy and gold out and about for Victory Monday today, the most I've seen in a long time. And these Commanders fans certainly have a whole lot to be excited about. Here comes the hammer. It was the catch scene around the world. And the Commander's quarterback Jaden Daniels connects with Noah Brown for a last second Hail Mary to beat the Bears. It's a moment Commander's fans won't forget. The last of the game, he threw that pass and long. I was like, oh, okay, we won. I was like, oh, man, that's what I'm talking about. I couldn't go to sleep right away. I was so much adrenaline. I'm like, I haven't been this excited since really like RG3 days. So it's a wonderful day for the city. I'm so happy it happened, and man, I just hope we can keep things going. And the rookie behind the big play won't forget it either. Once in a lifetime experience, like not too many people get to experience stuff like that. Um, that was my first time. But fans aren't stopping there. I mean, the sky's the limit. They've got high hopes and big dreams for this team. What would a Washington Super Bowl mean to you? Oh man, mean the world to me. Me and the world to me. I would love to have a Super Bowl right now because it's been like what, 20 something, years, 30 something years now. And as for where the commanders go from here, how does the team keep this going? Oh man, just keep 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 the ball in number five zone. <laughs> <laughs> and if you are itching to get in on some of the action coming up here, you can head up the road to New York next weekend as the team takes on the Giants. Those tickets are going for about sixty dollars. But if you want to come to the next home game on November tenth, commanders take it on the Steelers. Going to cost you around three hundred dollars to sit toward the back row. In Landover, I'm Randy Bass, DC News Now.